I know you're having that. You don't have to drink the whole thing, but I definitely need to get a sip for the face cam that I have. You down to have a sip of Four Loco? Uh, remind me what Four Loco is. It's a malt liquor. Oh. Do you, do you not, do you not, uh, have you never had a Four Loco? I don't think so. I'm gonna get one. I can't believe you've never had a Four Loco. Do you remember they used to, it used to be, um, it was mixed oh, was with caffeine. Like, like, like what? Yeah, and, and and like a bunch of people were dying, partying <laughs> on it. <laughs> That's yeah. what everybody said. Okay. It's except they don't. It doesn't have caffeine in it anymore. What were we talking about? Four loco. This. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're gonna <laughs> get the four loco uh, cam going. It's got its own dedicated cam. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta get that sponsor. <laughs> but yeah, cheers. This will be, uh, you only have to take a sip. I've, the, the couple people that have made drink, I've only made them take a sip. I don't know that, uh, we'll see. This should be okay. delicioso. All right. All right, cheers. Here's to you. <laughs> hmm. It's always the, like, sour. What does it taste like to you? Yeah, you know what? This, I'm, I'm totally gonna date myself here, but this totally reminds me of Zima. Oh my God, I, I have remember, not heard that name in, yes, forever. Like try this one, cause this, okay. is, uh, this one okay. is like, you know, this has. Oh, this one's actually better. Yeah, this doesn't taste like watermelon. <laughs> no. or, or melon, here, or, yeah, I'll let you. <laughs> Yeah, it reminds me of Zima. Zima, I like it. Or, um, when I was a kid, um, me and my friends would uh, pay homeless dudes to go into the liquor store and get us like, uh, you know, because they used to come in four packs, right? <laughs> Remember the little bottles of four packs? So you'd and then you'd give them one or? Pay the bu yeah, you know, or you'd give them a couple bucks, you know, and you pay the bum to get you some Zima, you know? It's dope. Yeah. I, uh, I went to purchase these today and the liquor store owner that always sees me buying these asked me, like, are, are you going to drink these? It's like 10 o'clock on a Tuesday. And I was like, ah, it's like kind of a gimmick, but not really. She's like, oh, okay. Because like only homeless guys come in and buy these. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I mean, whatever. You're like, I swear I got a place to stay. It was $2. These right. things are the cheapest alcohol you can probably find. And 13.8% alcohol. So it's not terrible. I'll tell you, it's the one drink that like, it doesn't f*** me up. Like it doesn't make me drunk. It makes me like, it gives me a head high that I cannot explain. Hmm. I mean, puzzles, totally different, right? Like a math equation, I could probably. Oh, yeah. yeah. But like not. Give me, give me a, a, the book of algebra any day. I'll get through that. Oh, like that. man, I love algebra. Algebra and geometry were always like the shit for me. When you get into like chemistry, forget it. I remember not being so good at chemistry, but I, I don't think I was really uh, paying too much attention in the class anyways. You weren't? <laughs> yeah, no. What were you like in, in school? Um, Where did you go to high school? I, I, I went to Bell High School. Oh, nice. Yeah, just right off the, uh, off the 710. Mm-hmm. Off uh, Florence, and and I live in Huntington Park, mm -hmm. which is the next town up. During my, my uh, freshman year, we lived in Cudahy, which is like the town right mm -hmm. next to the 710, and then we moved to Huntington Park, and um, I kept going to Bell High School because I didn't want to change my high school. Yeah. And during my senior year, uh, the school caught on and hey, you're not supposed to be coming here. <laughs> But the uh, but the vice principal there, um, I, I when I was a freshman, I participated in a pet program of his, where they sent uh, high school kids to go uh, study at uh, uh, L.A. Harbor uh, Community College down mm -hmm. the highway, and because I did that. He, I don't know what he did to, to figure it out, but I got to stay and finish my senior year at Bell High School. Hell yeah. Uh, cool thing, uh, cool fact, um, his son was the singer for Bullet Boys. No way. Yeah. <laughs> did he know who you were? Like, like. 
No, I, I was I was a high school in kid. In high yeah. school? Yeah. Oh, so just a habit, yeah. random coincidence. Yeah, he just happened to... The poor loco has already hit my head. Can you tell? <laughs> <laughs> Can you tell? Yeah. This is why I couldn't do it. I was like, just a sip is fine. It's funny, like, sitting in his... In, if I remember correctly, I was sitting in his office... And uh, he had a picture of uh, Mark Torian, the singer for that's Bullet Boys. That's dope. And he's like, oh, you in the Bullet Boys? He's like, no, that's my son. <laughs> who did you, like, who were your favorite artists growing up? Like, if you had a uh, go-to... Yeah, I was like, Metallica was huge for me. Yeah, me too. Not, not just, you know, Cliff Burton's bass playing, but just the, the, the music, the sound in general, you know? It's just like... Yeah, like uh, on constant rotation. You know? Yeah, I didn't give you the the intro that I wanted to give you, but my guest today is a. I need the boing 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 boing. You're not gonna hear it. It's gonna come through here. <laughs> uh, is a legend in the metal scene. You may have seen him. Yeah, you... depends who you ask. Oh, I, I'm pretty sure if you were to ask anybody, they would all consistently right, who? say... Who? No, -uh, ah, no fuck way. that guy. No, you're, you're giving me major street cred by put guy coming on my podcast today, <laughs> so thank you for that. You may have seen him play for bands such as Fear Factory, Soulfly, Assassino. No, oh. rumored Assassino. That guy wears a mask, so... Who knows what's sorry, under? Who sorry. knows what's under that I mask? I need to bleed the ru rumored, rumored <laughs> assassino. Are you a big wrestling fan? Uh, or no, I was when you? I was a kid. Yeah, I was when too. I was a kid. Yeah. No, why is it? I like how now. everybody's like, I was when I was a kid. And I was like, all right, well, I guess I'm the only like, adult I don't, still like, watching it. Like, I don't it. watch it anymore or like go I to do? man. Like, 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 you know, like Kerry King, he goes every, every time, you know. WrestleManias yeah, and shit. Yeah, Hell yeah. 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 You need to go to a WrestleMania. You might enjoy it. It's very I've, metal. I've been to one a long, long time ago. Really? But yeah. Uh -huh. I went to one, I think in like 2008. It was like the coolest experience. I made my dad go with me because no one else would come with me and I was, it was like Orlando Florida and I was like you're coming yeah. it was uh he met Snoop Dogg and it was oh, like yeah. the coolest experience of his life yeah. and I was like see man good shit happens at wrestling events yeah. that's where it is oh, that's a good time who did I miss I needed to to continue it was prong oh yeah mm -hmm. ministry mm -hmm. and is the longest standing current member of Static X uh, I guess but is uh, yeah, right? Yeah, I mean, you could say that. <laughs> I, th I think. Yeah. Um, Was there from the beginning, so yeah, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> this shit, man. I don't need it. I don't want it. <laughs> Get it out of my <laughs> sight. I don't normally drink with my podcast, and I was like, but this one. Like, I get the local part, obviously. I get the local <laughs> part, but, but, but what's the four? Like, I something tells me maybe it's only four flavors. Or, or it, uh, red, or, artificial red dye forty, blue dye thirty. Or what's the saying? Uh, four sheets to the wind. Three. Or three sheets. Four, to the, now it's well, four. Now it's four. Right? four hundred sheets to the wind. <laughs> there you I go. don't. This is the worst idea ever. But I'll tell you, it probably makes for some great content. I'll just continue drinking, and I'm just gonna read off of my script right here Zima. because I'm already. Somebody needs to bring <laughs> back Zima. <laughs> I think maybe. You know what? That's gonna be our that's gonna be our pitch. Four locos not good right? enough. Somebody needs to bring back Zima. Bring back Zima. I'll drink that shit on stage. <laughs> I'm gonna hold you to that. <laughs> All right. I'm you gonna make be Zima like, happen. Look, I got a spot. I got. Yeah, I got yeah, I'll, an be, I'll be the for first you. guy to sponsor Zima. <laughs> you watch. You watch, Tony. You're gonna get a call in like All a right. week. That's like, hey, bro. I made this shit work. You are about to go back on the road again. Yeah for your Project Regeneration Volume 2. Yeah. How was the success of Volume 1, and was the response what you were hoping for bringing in your new singer to replace Wayne Static? I, I wouldn't say replace, because uh, how are you going to replace a guy like that? But, uh, um, and, you know, the, when we're talking about the record, uh, the, the majority of the vocals are Wayne's. Mm -hmm. So, oh, I yeah. did not know that. Yeah. Um, long story short, uh, when we were putting this thing together, th th this whole thing started with, uh, with uh, like five demos that I had received from a uh, producer friend of, of ours that Wayne was kind of working with 
before he, he died, and he'd sent him these demos. And so after, shortly after his death, he'd sent them to me. And I sat on them for a while because, you know, like it, 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 Wayne had just died and, you know, I didn't, just didn't feel right to do anything, you know. Um, mm -hmm. So I sat on them for a couple of years and then I revisited them, um, reached out to the other guys and, hey, you guys want to help me finish up these, these songs? And uh, it kind of snowballed from there. And uh, we, as we were looking for more material, we found these demos that uh, Wayne had left behind where he had left behind vocal tracks and, and drum programs. And, and we had to piece all this stuff together, um, but we ended up with uh, two albums worth of material. So that's what Project Regeneration Volume 1 and 2 are. I heard you say something recently where you had mentioned that you only had the vocal tracks for a couple. Was it for a couple of songs and that you essentially had to come up with the music? Yeah, there, there was a couple of them where it was just vocals. There, there wasn't any, any music at all. So I want to talk about that for a second. Yeah. Like how... How do you build a song? Because I've had guests on here who are musicians and they essentially start with a beat. So when you have something like just vocals, how do you start to build something on the back end like that? Yeah, I mean, you know, uh, um, yeah, he's got something to say. He's got something to say. <laughs> they, this is, this is, uh... He's like, that's not how it happened. That's not how it happened. <laughs> Come on, bro. Poor local episode. It's this is, all good. You know what's funny? This pod is turning out um, to piece together very nicely. I have ones where I'm very <laughs> polished and I interview lawyers. And then there's ones where I drink for loco and we get a little messy. So <laughs> specifically for people that maybe aren't very well versed in songwriting or music production, like where, where, what do you, what kind of gets your flow going in terms of where you decide to lay a track work working on on this stuff in a lot of ways was kind of like the way we used to put tracks together back in the early days uh where wayne would come into the, into the rehearsal room with uh with his drum machine and uh and a guitar riff and go hey check this check this out and he'd play on the drum machine and, and a beat would play and he'd play a riff over it and we'd just start working on it from there and so a lot of the stuff that we had on these demos were just exactly that, a, a, a drum program and a guitar riff. And, and sometimes a vocal that went along mm -hmm. with it too. Mm -hmm. And so that helped us kind of recapture that vibe of, uh, of those, those early days where, mm -hmm. you know, how we wrote all the songs that ended up on uh, Wisconsin Death Trip, our first record. And that's what I, I really wanted to recapture that for, for these, uh, these recordings. And uh, I think we came pretty, pretty close to it. I'm gonna be completely honest with you. So I was listening to volume one and I had just assumed that you had, or you're, you revealed as being not your, officially your but you but know not, not, like, not, not, not official oh but you know i will like, i will it's also like, it's like the worst kept secret no no, no. I'm, 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 i'll let you know right now anything that yeah. there's gonna be plenty of editing in this shit right now especially most of my fuck ups that i've already said <laughs> so i'll leave that out but my point was gonna be like i had just assumed that project regeneration was not like some of them were like his actual vocal tracks, but a lot of them I thought were re-recorded. Sounds yeah. very similar live, and so I just assumed like, but it's actually him. Yeah, no, those are uh, actually Wayne Wayne's vocals. I was like, vocals. damn, this guy's done a pretty good job this whole time. <laughs> <laughs> Shit! And then you said, I was well, like, Well, the oh. trick is, the trick is, you know, because um, I really can't tell when it's him versus yeah, Wayne. Yeah, that's the trick. Yeah. Most of it's Wayne, but not everything. Mm -hmm. So the trick is, where you pick I started them out, to watch you know? that. I think it was, were you guys playing in London? Somebody posted a live show on YouTube or something, mm -hmm. and I was watching some of it, and uh, I was like, "Wow! Like he's he's got the sound like the sound down pat. It's like not he's and he's not an easy voice to replicate yeah, either. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
which is kind of fascinating when you hear it on the back end. That's like, I just had my mind blown on that, on that front. Did you get any sort of backlash for coming out with this and these new projects? On initial announcement, yeah. Um, a lot of doubt, you know, uh, some hate. Um, you know, considering how things left off between Wayne and myself and, uh, and a lot of misconceptions out there about how things went down between us and the band and, uh, and him. And uh, yeah, so there, there was definitely some negativity, but I think once we got out there and showed everybody what we were doing, and how cool and respectful mm -hmm. it was. Um, most of that went away. Mm -hmm. I definitely love, I love that you said respectful because I think with the the face mask that you've gone, which is fucking awesome, by the way. Uh, did you have somebody, is this person that designed and, and built this, this? Yeah, the, the, the latest one is uh, was designed by Eddie Yang, who... Uh, so uh, works in Hollywood a lot, and uh, I think he he did like the the Iron Man stuff. Oh, yeah. So he knows what he's doing, you know. Okay. Yeah, he does. Yeah. Did you decide? Did you know that that was going to be a thing that you wanted to do? No, I mean we were just trying to figure out how a, a cool way to represent Wayne on stage uh, without. Um, making it like, hey, here's Static X with their new singer. Right, right. Yeah, that's not what we wanted to do. Uh, we wanted to keep the focus on on remembering Wayne and re remembering the good times we all had back in the day and, you know, remembering the uh, the anniversary of our first record and to keep the focus on that. Mm -hmm. And I think w once we fell on the Zero character, um... I think that, that just totally served that purpose and um, kept kept it uh, a really cool vibe. Um, like when you went to go see the show, like if, if you squinted, you know, or you see the dark mm -hmm. image of just the hair, and and, and it, it was it brought you back to the, like that first time you saw Static X back in '99 or whatever, you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I've been seeing it. It looks so cool. You've been on the road a lot with a lot of different bands, artists. I'm sure you've seen a lot of colleagues within your industry go through their battles with addiction and mental health issues and touring and tour life and all of the above. How have... Because I've known you for a while and I don't think I've ever seen you off your rocker if that's a, if that's a good way to put it and so like how have you been able to kind of stay grounded and have the longevity of the career that you've had this far without falling susceptible to that stuff i mean i've had my moments definitely <laughs> i mean we all do you know you know especially those early days you know like uh Blacking out on Jaeger and stuff. <laughs> I got the blacking out on Jaeger down pat. The thing about the road is it, it, it's what you, what you make of it. And if you want that crazy rock and roll lifestyle, then yeah, you're going to have that. But if you want to just be chill and, and take it easy and, and kind of isolate yourself, you can do that too. Um, and for me... Like, yeah, I definitely, you know, in, enjoyed the fruits of our labor while out on the road. Um, but I think what, what's kept me grounded all these years is, you know, I still live in the same neighborhood. Uh, you know, my parents, you know, my, my family still lives here. I still hang out with all my old friends when I get back home, you know, and the you know, they'll be the first to, you know, like, hey, settle down, you know? <laughs> I feel like you need those friends, like in Hollywood or L.A., like you need some people to keep you grounded otherwise. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah absolutely, because it's so, it's, it's so easy to get caught up in, in the whole thing, especially when you're out on the road and every night 
there's always somebody there. Hey, Key. Um, <laughs> there's always people are you know always constantly kissing your ass. Hey, you're fucking awesome. Sunny you're the your best dicks here. And, like, Drink this. Yeah. Here, smoke this. You're snort. You know. Yeah. It, it, it's so easy to get caught up in it, and uh, you know, have, having a good home base helps helps keep you grounded and yeah. you know, keep keeps you keeps your feet stuck in reality. Yeah. Yeah. Do you have right, uh, <laughs> right Kitty? Stay at home, playing video games, yeah. just like, mm-hmm. which you are, by the way, I have to give you your 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 snaps here for a minute, because I, out of a very lengthy Wikipedia page, hmm. I have never seen a shorter personal life section in my <laughs> entire life, other than maybe mine. Um, and it's fairly short, and I was hoping to maybe kind of fill it in a little bit. You went to Bell High School. Yeah, I went to Bell High School, yeah. Lived in Cudahy and then moved to Huntington Park, which is where I am now. And you've been there the whole time? Although I did spend a year or so uh, in Long Beach. Shared an apartment with a buddy of mine. Uh, and then like six months to a year before we went out on tour, I was actually subleasing uh, Koichi's apartment in Hollywood. Really? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I know, I know, I know a couple of musicians who are just like, like uh, the, if it's not a permanent home for them, it's like, I'll literally live wherever. Cause I'm only yeah, there I for mean, a couple one, weeks. One, once I, once we started touring and for the few days, um, we were home, I just go back to my parents' house mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and you know, I didn't have a place of my own and, um, really until, uh, I took over the mortgage of my parents' house uh, in mid 2000s because I, I was just living in the garage in my parents' garage because I would only be there for like a couple of weeks at a time and then oh I gotta go again. So I was like, why am I gonna get a, an apartment and, and pay rent for a place I'm never at? <laughs> Amen. Have you finished? Uh, is this the same house you were renovating? Yes. Yes. Are you, have you finished? No. I'm down in the kitchen. <laughs> just oh, just the kitchen. Just the kitchen's left. How how long has it taken you? It's been a long ass. Time. Yeah, well, I mean, I've taken uh, a few years off of from doing anything because I've just been so busy. Yeah. Um, but um, yeah, it, it, I've been working on that house for at least a decade, if not longer. And you like don't I, just. I, I did a lot of the work myself. Mm-hmm. I, I I brought in a few people to help me out with a couple things. Um, um, my buddy John Fisher, who was a professional tile guy, he came in and, and redid the floors in my living tile room guy. And, and hallways and um, did the shower stall in one of my bathrooms. Uh, yeah, I, I totally would have screwed that up. What's your up. biggest piece of advice for somebody that's doing a home renovation on their own? Uh, YouTube. <laughs> yes. Yes. That's where I learned. I how, that's where I learned how to do everything. It, well, I should say everything because uh, I did start when I first started. Um, I did pick up a, a half a dozen books at Home Depot. Home Depot how sells books. Stuff. Yeah, they sell how to how to. Did you know Home Depot sells books? They do. I didn't know. That. They have a, a how to section. It's small. It's hidden. But uh, the, home renovation the, for yeah. dummies. Mm-hmm. Volumes yep. one through yeah, 150. Like that, like, uh, picked up a, a book on on electrical plumbing. Uh, you might be able to teach me a thing or two. I know. Well, I'll just let you borrow the book. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> I can't read. <laughs> <laughs> That's too hard. Just give me a link to the YouTube. <laughs> no, but really, my friends, we were playing. A, it was like a. It was the Harry Potter version of Clue, and they were. She was reading the instructions, and like for me, like. I literally was staring at her the whole time as she was reading them, looking like, why does she keep looking at me? Because <laughs> two cents in then, I was like, I'm not nothing sticking. Right. Out of everywhere that you've been in the world, like, where is, where, where, where's the coolest strip club that you've ever been to? I'd have to say um, uh, the clubhouse in Dallas, which unfortunately is no longer there. I- but yeah, I, 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 every did. time I, I, I went there, it was such an awesome time. You know, Fritz isn't open anymore. It's totally closed. Which one? Both Fritz of them? Fritz three. Fritz two and three. Fritz Don't two. Because I, I remember Fritz one in uh, Lakewood. 
I did I not know Fritz yeah. was in Lakewood. Well, my buddy Dave, who I still owned go, it. I, no, 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 no. He, he, he spent enough money there. He should own it. But, uh, <laughs> um, he used to go there all the time. He used to go there so much that on the thank you list of uh, the, of Wisconsin Death Trip, <laughs> I, I named him Dave. See you at Fritz Leva. <laughs> But yeah, I still, I still see him uh, all the time and go go watch football at, at his place all the time. So he's one of my oldest he's friends. He's gonna be so glad. He's yeah. gonna be like, "Fuck yeah. yes, I got a shout out, bro." <laughs> me and Fritz, my two. But yeah, he, he told he told me like uh, yeah, like ten fifteen years ago it it, it shut down. Um, Fritz one and then Fritz two and I which was Fritz on. Two. Yeah, Fritz 2 was uh, off Catello, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, and then yeah. Fritz 3 was somewhere else. I don't know that I, I ever I didn't know about 3. I, I knew yeah, about 2. I never knew about 3. three. Yeah. And so I think the only place left in Anaheim is this <laughs> single-story place in, like, a strip mall next to a $15 all-you-can-eat Chinese food place. I'll have to step in. Maybe hmm. that'll be a podcast episode. Just, like, chilling in the room. Right. Have naked ladies. Orange County is not a huge, you know, fan of... Um, naked, naked ladies. ladies. Mm. Uh, that's a, that's a dark they just shame. can't be charging you to be naked. Nah, that's just the okay. difference. Mm. There's plenty. There's plenty of Mastros down the street waiting to you know <laughs> for for a good dollar. Right. But like any chicks on stage, no go. You. The only thing I saw about your personal life on your Wikipedia was that um, you love video games. But I already knew that about you. Um, what kind of video games are you playing right now? I I, I recently uh, jumped off the Destiny 2 hamster wheel. I, I've been playing that yeah. a lot, like since uh, right right before Destiny 2 came out. I was I, I jumped on Destiny 1 uh, right around Rise of Iron, which is right when like the last expansion before mm -hmm. it moved to Destiny 2, and. Um, and yeah, I, I finally Bungie pissed me off enough that I was like, you know what? I'm screw this game. I'm uh, I'm going to revisit all the games that I neglected because I was too busy playing Destiny 2. Hell yeah! So I just spent this last summer going over uh, Resident Evil 7 and 8. Uh, I'm currently revisiting two. And um, after that, I don't know. I'm just uh, I, my backlog is like ridiculous. And probably a wide range. Yeah. Halo. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I definitely. I think played, I remember talking Infinite, to you. You were playing yeah. GTA. Uh, yeah, all? I played that long. Long. Uh, San I think the last. I, yeah, I think San Andreas was the last one I I, I played. Mm -hmm. Um. They kind of lost me after that. Um, Why? Um. Too many microtransactions. You know, it's like. And it's all in your face. Hey, buy this. Hey, buy that. Just like, let just me play, play the, game. the game. Right? Let me play the game. Yeah. And, uh, you know, and, and it, there's all kinds of stuff on my catalog I got to go through. So. What else? Yeah. What else um, you got out there? You know, make me pull the phone out. Yeah, it sucks you don't play Call of Duty, man. I need a I, clan mate. I, uh, because I suck at the PvP stuff. You um, can't suck if you do it more often. You'll get better. Yeah, that's what they used to tell me when on uh, Destiny 2 PvP, <laughs> and uh, I, I was mediocre at best. Oh um, really? Have you yeah. have you played Call of Duty before? Uh, I think the last Call of Duty I did was uh, Modern Warfare 3. I have uh, yeah. I mean, look, there's there's. I haven't oh, played I Ghost. Love, okay, so I love I Black played, Ops. I, I, I think I started messing around with Black Ops. But, um, Hell yeah. The campaigns, anyway. Hell yeah. Um, yeah, see, Modern oh, Warfare I 3. Love, yeah. so, so the mm -hmm. most recent Call of Duty that has come out is it's this. It's a remake of that, right? Remake. Yeah, mm -hmm. remake of Which 3. Which I've been pl mm -hmm. I played back in the day, so now I'm just destroying mother and they don't like me. <laughs> what are your thoughts on the current music scene as it relates to metal because maybe i just haven't been paying attention as much as maybe i once did but it doesn't feel like the scene is as hot as it once was and maybe it's my hot take other than for bands that have been in existence since in the last 15 years yeah that might, that, that, that might be part of it you know i don't like seek out bands as as much as i used to uh but I think it's also too just you know the the era we live in. There, there's so much out there, so much saturation 
it's hard to to break out and stand out and i think uh, unfortunately i think the days of uh you know the slip knots and the tools and i i don't see that coming back again you know it's heartbreaking yeah like mm -hmm. which is funny because there's more avenues than ever to access music like there's I, I think that's that that's part of the problem, problem. too because it's it's so easy to to just get whatever mm -hmm. and, and and there's so much of it out there it's hard to you know to pick and choose you know mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, can, I don't even know where to start half yeah. of the time mm -hmm. and, and it's not like you know, you can uh you know rely on labels to to do much for you any anyways these days especially now you know label you, you, you try and get a deal with the label and they want to cut of everything your your merch your touring that was unheard of and what's funny is i was watching a video that laid it out perfectly recently where they talked about how it was about stand-up comedy but the same goes for record labels where the record labels used to have the audience and you needed the talent, right? And it would be a nice merge of like, you'll sign on to us and we will give you the audience, right? Like we'll pitch you in the right mm -hmm. way. Now, creators, artists, musicians, they're looking, the labels are looking for somebody with the audience and the talent and they just want a cut of everything regardless. And right. they'll just like, essentially, I don't think people are educated enough to know that like record labels now do nothing but just disperse your stuff, which you could do on your own anyway. Yeah, and exactly. it, there's no difference. Yeah. How is your experience with with your, are you on a label? No. I, I haven't looked, you're not, no, you're on we, your own? we're doing it ourselves. Yes. Because we, when we first started uh, Looking at how we were going to release this, we went and uh, looked at labels, and they weren't going to do anything we couldn't do, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and they were going to take a cut. I was like, why Why are we going to give you a cut for something that we can do? And like The only advantage of going to a label is getting money up front, and the money wasn't that good. Can you just explain for the people, because uh, my followers are fairly educated, they're very smart, um, so they can keep up, but basically from your words, can you just kind of uh, just briefly outline how the, the advance process works with with record labels and your contracts? Signing? Yeah, I mean, it, when, when, you, uh, when you sign a deal with a record company, you, you usually get an advance, which is an advance on the sales of, of projected sales of your record and once they sell they start selling your record and they recoup all that then you start getting your royalties and whatever um but you yeah. know you get that money up front you, 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 and you usually use that money to to record make your record and and market and do other things and the thing that they probably what they would love to take advantage of and what they always took advantage of for the longest time was that they you it would seem as if you're getting prince laid this out so perfectly in one like somewhere they pitch it as if you're getting a 1.5 million dollar contract but what that 1.5 million dollars is an advance essentially yeah. and if you don't make that money in sales that's gonna have to come out of your own pocket if you haven't spent that 1.5 in production already mm -hmm. and I think that's the biggest misconception about the music industry is that people make all this money and you're like, well, record deals aren't ever, and the old way is based on actual albums, like actual yeah. disc sales, right? And, and nobody does that anymore. So, no, and, it's and, streaming. And you get, you know, a, a fraction of a penny per stream. <laughs> well, let's talk about it really quick. So, like, what has your experience been in terms of, the money made on on CDs versus actual comparable, how comparable it, it is to... I mean, if you're comparing CD sales now, it's, it's abysmal. But nobody buys CDs anymore. Um, back in the day... But the cost doesn't even equate. Like, yeah, no. the money you'd be making on a song off an album if you were to divvy it up doesn't even come close to the amount if you were to go to Spotify and press play. Yeah, no, not, not at all. You know, somebody's making money... 
off of that, but it's not the artist's. <laughs> it's never the artist. Yeah, yeah you, you wrote the song, but here, here's, here's a little something for you. Hey. I think that's, that was like the biggest, um, I wanted to, like when I went to law school, I went with the intention of wanting to be a music lawyer. Like I wanted to represent artists and bands. And once I realized, oh, it's like the big four and a couple indies versus you're just like, you either produce your own music or you're out of luck. And yeah. I was like, oh, when I learned there was a case, it was that Eminem case and it was essentially about the streaming and numbers that you got, because I did royalty accounting for a little bit, on, um, I'm trying to remember what it was, it was like sync sales or whatever. And there was a, a settlement that was worth billions of dollars that was ordered to be paid by a court, right? Because the numbers didn't match up. And what these big four record companies said was, well, if we paid this settlement out or this court ordered amount out, we'd be bankrupt. So they just didn't pay it. And they're still around. And I was like, mm. so wait a minute, yeah. like my hands oh, up. Oh, well, we can't pay it, sorry. Wait, I said, so wait a minute. They, they didn't pay it, but they were ordered by court to pay it. Yes, they didn't pay it. No. And this is okay? And they're yeah. like, I feel like there's going to be a change for that though, especially with this kind of, like there's all these talks about AI and AI generated music and they're doing it for lawyers. I'm sure they're doing, are they doing it for musics? Oh you like yeah. music it, yet? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that, that's, uh, that, that, that's already out there, a AI generated music. I've heard like the raps, like the people mm -hmm. that are using other people. Yeah. Have you had any experiences with that yet? Or no, no, not yet, no. Uh -uh. Do you have any thoughts on using? I mean, I, it could be a cool tool to, to use, um, but like anything, if if it's all you use, then the the humanity and the creativity is taken out of it. And you know, without that, it, like, is it really art? Like, art is supposed to be human expression. So, and it's all, I mean, I, just to add on to that, I think it's always, it's built, AI is generated off of data points that already exist by stuff that people have already created. So like, you're never going to get projects or art that's never been done before by AI. You're always get going to get something, you're going to get a whole bunch of reboots, whole bunch of remakes, whole bunch of like pre-curated stuff that's been made for before but like for movies or actors right then it just as a comparable like you're never going to get a quentin tarantino movie you'll get what's done before but you're never going to get a fresh set of mm -hmm. a script from ai you're just going to get stuff that's been and i think the same thing with music um but i don't know i feel like it's people have just started to talk about it well it, it, i it, it, it's cheaper to buy an AI program than to pay someone to write stuff. And, and so that that's where it's going. Do you think though that it might, that might in turn then put some of the power back into individual creators who are somebody that, that loves to make the art and has the ability to generate something that can't be duplicated. Like I'll, I'll give you what I was thinking for the, like for the movie actor market is like, I think what's going to happen is they're going to start making so much watered down, like predictable shit that independent movies are going to make a comeback. Like, I think they're going to make a massive comeback. Like they're going to, these big studios are going to go AI. Like, do I you think, think, I think, I think it's already happening. I mean, look at how abysmal, uh, box office sales have been terrible yeah they were talking about like mean girls doing 28 million i was like 28 million back in fifth like 15 years ago would have been sad like if this is 15 <laughs> yeah. years yeah what yeah so i i think it's already happening and uh yeah I, I, people are gonna go somewhere for their entertainment and I feel like we need it. Yeah. I feel like I feel like we desperately need a creative wave of some fo like some form or another and I don't know like where that comes or how it comes but I don't I don't think it comes from the traditional uh avenues. 
you know, big Hollywood studios, big record labels. I don't think it comes from that anymore. Nope. Nope. It's gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna, I'm, I'm really excited to see where it's gonna go. Cause I feel like for so long, there've been so many, um, abuses of power and like just overtaking like they like record labels shouldn't get a cut of your merch if they're not the ones actually making like your shit and they, like they shouldn't be getting a cut of any well, of that well, like shit I said, you know? they, they want a cut of your touring now too they, they, <laughs> like you're out there busting your ass on the road and, 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 and they're sitting in their office and they want to cut of that too. It's like, no. Go so fuck tell yourself. me, so tell me what it was like going into your meetings, like with some of these people. Like, did you literally, I would have. Well, literally... I mean, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't go. Oh. We had a management dude. Do, do, yeah. You know, they, they, they go in. Was and that do your instant negotiate. reaction though? But, but it was just like, like, no, come on. Like, why, why am I going to give them, why am that? I going to give them, um, you know the band had been away for 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 a long time. Um, at the time, you know Wayne had passed away. The I think he was playing to to three four hundred people. You know, it, like the brand was just you know the lowest it, it had ever been, and uh, and the attitude was the guy on his own couldn't. You know, couldn't sell a whole lot of tickets. What are the three idiots in 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 the band going to do without them? Yeah, <laughs> that was the attitude. That is where you're <laughs> wrong, my friend. When were you able to go back and listen to those demo tapes again? Um, about a year, year and a half later. I, I was I was sitting at home. Um, I, I think it was 2016, and uh, I was sitting at home for like six months um waiting for the next fear factory tour to happen and, and uh you know that's when they started going through lawsuits and stuff and you know so everything just got put on hold and i'm sitting around well what am i gonna do now mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and um so yeah that's that's when i went in and oh yeah i have this stuff let's, let's check this out was it emotional or not really um a little bit. I mean, um, I, 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 I kind of come to terms with with Wayne's passing at that point. Um, but there still wasn't like a sense of closure, you know? Yeah. Because uh, like uh, the thing that really got me was um, as remote a possibility as as I knew it was, there was uh, there was always a slim chance that maybe he'd come around and and get sober and we'd bury the hatchet, you know. Uh, but once he died, I was like, "That's it. That's never gonna happen." And when, once that hit me, um, yeah, that that's when things got really emotional for me. Ah, uh, I'm sorry. Yeah, by the time I I. I uh, revisited those demos. I, I'd come to terms with that. But part of part of why we we did this as well is is to give up all of us, the the, the, the three original guys, kind of a sense of closure too, and uh, just coming to terms with oh. Wayne, Wayne not being being with us anymore. You know. Yeah. Um. And. Um, I think he'd be super impressed and super proud of. What you guys have put? Yeah, I, I I know he'd 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 love what we're doing. He, you know, we, we were all big Kiss fans, and you know, it's like we're putting on a show, and I, I I know he'd love it. You got a full, you got a full like robot. I don't know. He's got the bubble thrower. <laughs> is that what is he? What is he got a bubble gun? <laughs> I yeah. saw it. I was like, I need. You're not coming to LA though. For we this... did. Oh, we did ended. I miss we it? En you missed it. We ended. The, we ended leg one in LA at the Wiltern. What day? Uh, November first. I would have been. Oh, was I at? No, I wasn't. I was free. I could have. Well, there you go. Damn. I don't. It's like I used to. I used to frequent like Ticketmaster and like see when shows were coming up. I don't like. I have no method. 
<laughs> to see like what shows are happening anymore. It's the most bizarre. Like, what do you, if you want to like go check out, not necessarily a friend show, but like if you want to see what's happening this week, what do you use? Yeah, I mean, uh, back in the day, I used to just go get the LA Weekly or the OC Weekly. Oh, get, They're like, like, all right, here's all the shows Space coming out. Event yeah. updates, <laughs> which I don't get anymore at all. Yeah, yeah. I don't know what's going on. Yeah. And so, like, I, um, my favorite band is Pantera, and I, I have, I've never seen them. I, it, it's half the band now, which is fine. But they were, I was supposed to see them at AfterShock this year. Oh, cool. And then they dropped off. I had already had my passes like a week mm. prior to go play a different festival. But I didn't go to SoFi to see them with Metallica, Metallica. because I thought I was going to see them a week later. Mm. And I, I was like, damn, I'm just, I don't know if I'm ever going to see them. This yeah. is fine. Have you seen, have you seen Pan? I still have not seen the, them. Because I saw no. something that said you were in a motorcycle accident when you were supposed to go on a oh, tour yeah. with no, Pantera. Is, yeah, that was, uh, what was it, 2001? Mm -hmm. I think. I got in a in a wreck like a week before we were supposed to leave on the tour, and I broke my collarbone, so um, I couldn't play bass. Um, so we had our, our friend Marty O'Brien play bass for me, and I was on stage just doing my backing vocals, but I wasn't gonna miss the tour. No, <laughs> I was like Pantera, Pantera Slayer, and Morbid Angel one. Yeah, no. I was like, yeah, no. I know. You're going to have to tie me up to keep me from yeah, going no, on this, on this fucking tour, you know? That's another band, though, that I feel like, you know, kind of had some unclosed doors, kind of had some unfinished business in terms of, you know, how the, the band was uh, getting along and their issues and whatnot. Is there... Is there anything that you would go back and advise your 20 young 20 year younger self before going into you know this whole sort of trajectory with this band? Is there something you would like a piece of advice you would give to your younger self about navigating your career? Not so much career advice. It could be anything. I would have told myself to not spend my money so foolishly and uh, invest in real estate immediately. <laughs> that one. <laughs> that one. Because uh, I, I bought some vehicles I probably shouldn't have, have purchased, and I should have put cars. I should have put that money into into a home, and uh, and I'd probably uh, wouldn't have a mortgage anymore. But I still have a mortgage, so there we go. Your mortgage is probably pretty low, though, in comparison to what the rest of... Uh, I, I refinanced uh, at, a, in a, at, at a good time, and, okay. and my mortgage is lower than uh, some people's uh, monthly rent. I guarantee your mortgage is lower than my rent. <laughs> I guarantee it. And what's funny is there's a new property that, that got built here, like right down the street, and they're charging... Two twelve hundred dollars more than I'm currently paying right now, which so it's probably three times your your mortgage. Ouch! Which is a whole I I like it's a whole other fun conversation. <laughs> yeah, it makes me so mad because like I mean you think about all of these areas, especially in like what would not be considered um, like high income neighborhoods in California that are astronomical. I mean, think of Inglewood, like. That whole town is sort of, I mean... Well, there's there's certain areas, right? yeah, but, there's certain areas that, that, that are definitely high-end, and there's still some areas that, uh, that even I wouldn't want to drive through. <laughs> agreed, agreed. But even the people of Inglewood can't even afford to live there anymore, was my point. Like, you think about... Oh, yeah, yeah, like, definitely. Like, all with SoFi and, like, mm -hmm. all of these other projects that are kind of up and coming, and it's funny because they kind of... They get these stadium projects. He wants them for Loco. Um, they get these stadium projects because, um, like, a lot of these deals get, um, like, money gets put into these mm -hmm. programs to get put back into Inglewood. But what's sad about that is the people of Inglewood that could actually benefit from those programs don't get to enjoy it because they're yeah. not going to live there anymore. They get priced out of it. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And, it, you're, I mean, we're watching it now, and it's kind of sad. But, um, yeah, yeah, rent's Hi. What is your favorite non-metal song right now? Non-metal song? 
Do you do you like any genre music that isn't metal? Um, he seems to think so. Rare? Yeah, nothing comes to mind. Really? <laughs> <laughs> no Gypsy Kings. No, like uh, right now I'm listening to a little bit of Elvis. No, nothing. It's like, and it's not that I don't listen to other genres of music. I mean, if you look in my in my phone, like you'll 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 find Earth, Wind, and Fire. And, oh, you okay, know, okay. Nothing current, like like I'm. Nothing that's like stuck in my okay, head. Styles. Yeah. No. Like, uh... <laughs> no. no you know, I don't do hairstyles. Uh, um, Tony's got dad shirt, jokes yeah. for days. I like yeah, it. Right, I like yeah. it. Papa's. Who wants dinner? Who wants dinner? Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Psych. It's my favorite thing to do. You're like psych. Okay, let's wrap this up, Jen. Let's wrap this up. This is this is the problem. As I as the four loco, it Papa's kind of hard, hard to stay on track. It was a good question too. <laughs> it was like uh, it was like Harry my Styles? final fucking question. No, it wasn't Harry Styles. It was a good question. It'll come to me. Give me a second. It normally comes around when I. You got to keep the brain wet, you yeah? know. Yeah, that's where the four loco comes in. <laughs> right. We covered a lot. I forgot my best question. My best question. Well, you didn't write it down anywhere? You'd think I would, but I didn't. <laughs> I didn't. Oh, no. No. It's not it, huh? I remember. Do you have a post-show routine? And it's important to me because I talk about mental health a lot, and especially for artists and performers because, right, your kind of performance schedule isn't on like with your normal body's rhythm so like how do you do you, is do you have a routine to bring down the energy after a show jump in the shower get cleaned up and uh grab a drink i like it you don't have to like for me even if i like if i dance for for an hour and it's like past 8 p.m sometimes it takes me like three four hours to like bring everything down does that make sense, or do you do you just sleep naturally? No, well, I, I mean, I don't go to the, bed, the right bed right away. Um, you know, you, you, I get off stage, jump in the shower, uh, get cleaned up, get changed into some dry clothes, and serve myself a drink, pack up all my stuff from the dressing room, take it back to the bus, uh, and then depending on how long we have until we got to leave, um, and if the bar at the venue's still open, I'll go have a drink at the bar, or I'll have a drink there on the bus, and and then, and then I'll just, by by then like two three hours have passed by, and unless I'm on tour with Static, um, then I get cleaned up, and then I got to go do meet and greet, oh. and that takes an hour. That probably actually helps bring everything. Yeah, and then I'll go back and get. Packed up and have a drink and. I think I think I think what you mean to say is you're a mentally healthier person than I am, which is totally okay. <laughs> I guess so. <laughs> I feel like so. I I'm gotta like, like I gotta like really like I gotta like maybe meditate or like put something on. I gotta like take a like couple of like supplements. Could be the drugs. For me, for me, it's not so much that uh, my brain doesn't shut down. It's the the constant ringing in my ears that keeps me up. So I gotta have like a, I gotta have something on the TV or like a rain machine or something. Um, Do you have a rain machine? Uh, I, a little thing on my phone, a little app that does rain sounds, oh. and then and then I, I I've been falling asleep to purring cat sounds sometimes and blizzard sounds and yeah just anything to drown Dude, out the I'll constant ringing you, in my ear i'll send you i have a couple of um i found a couple of youtube they're like 11 hour videos that i just like i i put them on my mm -hmm. tv and they're like yeah. um the the cozy rooms yeah they're yeah, like yeah. that's my uh, shit yeah. man that I is do, my shit I do that lately too. Yeah. the snow or like Sound yeah. of rain with the cat sleeping yeah, yeah, in it. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Yep, do that too. Yeah. It's kind of what I was getting at. Was like, mm -hmm. do you have? But like that, I need that to like bring everything. Out. Otherwise, I'm just like. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, uh, I'll, I'll have I'll have bouts of insomnia sometimes where like I just can't get to sleep and 
thinking about shit and, you know, and go, how does this work? Or, well, wait, what, what if I did that? And like, like, especially like if I'm at home and I'm, and I'm in the middle of a project and you know, like I'm working on something and I'm like, oh, what about if I did that instead of, you know, oh, maybe, maybe, maybe I should have inverted that piece of drywall, you know, just <laughs> stuff like that, you know, that like yeah. I, I could have done some, you know, so I'll have those moments. Do you moments. think you have ADHD sure. at all? I, I don't think so. Um, well, maybe I do. I mean, uh, I like, uh, like uh, when I was a kid, um, I, I, apparently I was a smart kid and they put me in like in these advanced placement classes, but uh, they would, uh, the teachers would call me the absent minded professor because like I could never like. What's up, bro? Yeah. Welcome to the ADHD so, club. So maybe I do, but. Um, you're not absent minded. You're very present minded. You're just not like with them. You're like, I'm thinking about other stuff. I'm dreaming about other stuff. I've already gotten to where you want me to like, go. Like, here. like, like, when I'm home and I'm working on stuff, like I'll be running around back and forth and trying to get stuff done. And I'm like, oh, wait, I forgot to do that. And, like, and so I'll go back and like, I, so like, I got to backtrack a lot of times, you know, because it's like, it's like I'm focused. Oh, let me do this. Oh, wait, I forgot that. And, you know, so like, it, if that's the ADHD, then then guilty. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. That I it's. I think I don't know. I've grown up knowing that I've had it my whole life, so maybe I feel a little bit differently about it. But I truly, it's gonna sound so stupid, but I really think that people with ADHD are are like really brilliant. Um, like like just are are more equipped to do shit. They just don't fit into society's standards of like behavior like we don't just mm. follow every rule especially like i i was always the the space cadet in high school or like junior high like i would always like people be like where did she go and i'm like on another planet would you mind <laughs> like i'm enjoying it just right. leave me alone i'm not bothering anybody i've always found it pretty interesting to like ask how people get stuff done or how they in the stuff that they think about how they stick to one or how they know that something is something that they should kind of follow through with. So how do you know if you like come up with something or you have something in your head they like you're thinking about like what makes you kind of want to just execute? I think I, I think you know, it, it's kind of like getting in a zone and like feeling in, in a moment, you know, like, yeah, this is working. Let's keep doing that, you know? Mm -hmm. I, mm -hmm. I, I, so I'll get that feeling where like, yeah, this is working. Like, like I, all this shit I was thinking about, and like, yeah, let me try this, and and then I'm like, yeah, it's working. All right, let's keep doing that. Yeah, they're firing. They're <laughs> yeah, firing yeah, yeah, yeah. the right uh -huh. way. This feels yeah. right. Mm -hmm. yeah, 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 yeah. I think starting small is always good too. Like, it doesn't have to be perfect, but like, let's just figure out what works, and then like, when it does work, you're like, that, that, mm -hmm. whatever that is, that's this for me, and I don't know why. Like, I started dicking around, and then I was like. This is working. This is working. Mm -hmm. For loco. Not working. Not that. <laughs> not that. We're ex that. Well, well Tony, drink some cheers. Four loco to that. Drinks. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming and joining and popping in. It's been so long. Yeah, I, I it's hope been I a while. see you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I know. We've. I don't know why. I don't know. I well, caught like you right pandemic. at the best yeah, time. Yeah. Yeah. Like right before everything shut down and and. and, and I feel yeah. like I lost touch with everybody yeah. after that. Well, yeah, definitely. It, it seems that 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 during that lockdown time, uh, a, a lot of people had like like not related bad things happen while that was all no, happening. No, I think like, a lot of people. Yeah, had like, like 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 for me, um, what was it the the last year of the pandemic? What was it? Twenty two uh, or. Tw uh, I, I forget. Might have been 21. 21 or 20. Oh, the, the, the last year of the pandemic, you know, my mom had been, uh, had been fighting uh, ovarian cancer for five years and she finally succumbed to it in, uh, in early 2023, five days before my birthday. And, oh, uh, no. Yeah. And, um, you know, at that point, I, I hadn't toured in like, you know, a, a year and been cooped up at home and, and and then, and then that that following year, like I swear, it was like a kick in the balls every month. You know, it started with my mom dying, and then a month later, I come home 
and I find my favorite cat dead on the floor. No way. <laughs> yeah. Dude, that the is big like giant, my... my big giant <gasps> black cat. That's my... Oh. And, uh, oh, that's yeah, cool. so, so he's dead on the floor. I'm like, oh, man. And, and then, uh, and then uh, about a month and a half later, my dad's in the emergency room. And, and then a month after that, I'm in the emergency room. And it's just like, fuck, what the fuck is going yeah. on with this year? Yeah. <laughs> How do you, like, what do you do to, like, keep it together? Do you just, like, survive? Or do you Yeah, have I was, I'm like, you know, it, 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 it's like. I got two choices. I can lay down and roll over and uh, wallow in my sorrow, or I can pick myself up, dust off, and all right, let's let's keep moving. Yeah. And I've always been, I've always had the attitude, you know, what? Yeah, let's just keep moving. I'm not gonna waste time. You know, I, I like. I know my mom wouldn't want me sitting around being all sad and shit, you know? Get the fuck up. Yeah. Yeah. So I, that's what I do. I'm just like, all right, let's just pick yourself up and keep moving. Do you meditate at all? You ever try? No, I, I can't, can't quiet my brain down enough for that. Oh, I definitely think you're 80. Yeah. I, 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 I've no, tried. I'm not trying to diagnose you. I don't want to like... <laughs> Again, again. I think is that, I is that, been... is that your is that your professional medical opinion? No, 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 no. Do not, do not. I shouldn't be diagnosing. That's not fair. But I think you know. I just I have this theory that I think a lot more people in this world are going around undiagnosed with ADHD, and that's not a problem. It's just to be like an awareness just thing be for aware me. Like I think yeah, more sure. people. Not not you. I just think. I think more people have it than we realize. And so like anytime I, I know it when I see it in people and I don't see it in you, which is why I asked. Um, Cause when I see it in people, I go oh, like they're ADHD. <laughs> but like you talked about a couple of things and I was like, he is a dreamer. And there are typically like the dreamers tend, in my opinion, um, like these daydreamers that we talk about, like I think a lot of those people have ADHD, which is just like I can't pay attention to this book right now because I'm dreaming about a way better story in my f-ing head. Like, have a nice day. But um, you know, I think uh, it's it is hard. Like for me, like meditation. It, it's f-ing terrible, yeah, I, you know? I've tried it, and it's like I start thinking about it's oh yeah, they dis- do that yeah. Yeah, I was like, wait, I got, I got shit to do. I have one. I have one though. I have a meditation that's like, you might be thinking about other things right now. That's okay. Just come back when you're ready. But even just hearing that brings me back, and I go, holy. F-. I had, I like, my therapist recommended me to somebody who gave, like, talked, like, gave me a. It's like an audio recording of her meditation, essentially. Hmm. But that that one thing that she did, I was like, I'm hooked. I'm okay. I'm back because she'll say it every like, it's like a 15 minute. It's just a 15 minute meditation that I pop into my earbuds mm-hmm. when I because I get a lot of performance anxiety sometimes, and so um, it helps. But just thought I'd ask. But thank you, Tony, for coming through. You are not on social media, so it's not even like I can. I mean, I I have I'll a tag. I have a Facebook account. <laughs> Um, like I, 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 I put, I I post on it once a year for for like, for my birthday, just to thank people for, you know, like I used to be active on it when, uh, when I was out, you know, touring with Soulfly and and later with ministry. But now that the band's back together, like it's like, well, what do I need my social media for the, the band has Sir, social media will you please just like give me you don't have an instagram no can we make you one um well isn't isn't like instagram's all about pictures right it's actually video now or it's video very, yeah i'm, very, I'm like, even TikTok. i'm even worse with that stuff like oh, I, i'm all i'm always like i, I, can I like, like 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 i leave a situation and i'm like you know I probably should have took a picture of that. Oh, well. Like, I'm never like, oh, let me get a picture of that. You know like, what? I'm, I'm coming with, I'm stuff. coming on like the last like weekend of your tour. I'll come for the last three days. I'll film you all of your content that you need for the, <laughs> I, for the next year. I, you have no idea. Like it's, it's a, like you need, you need somebody that's just a little bit, 
I got yeah, you. Don't yeah, worry. I we'll, guess. We'll, I mean, uh, I, I, you know, my, my buddy it, Dino, he, he's like all over Twitter and Instagram. He's and, so yeah. good at Twitter. I don't yeah, know how. Like, he's just. Like, just... Uh, just like, uh, you don't uh, have to have all that, but. Uh, like, I, I got other shit to do, man. <laughs> you, know? you actually do have a following already, so you don't have to do much. Like, you really don't. You're the type of person well, well, that. I know, I know that, like, I mean, I haven't checked in quite some time but um i know the, the the facebook page like is full up on the the friends so like i, I can't add any more friends to the facebook page so uh, I, I, me... I, I, don't, I don't know how much that counts for these days i think uh... you know like like it's funny facebook is now like myspace used to be back 10 years ago now it was like except like, like I, I i had a kid laugh at me when it, it, hey, are you on social media? I was like, yeah, I, 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 got, I got Facebook. He's like, ah, <laughs> some, loser. Punk, some punk kid. I'm like, all right, loser. whatever, dude. What is this like, Facebook? Yeah, exactly. You old man. So, yeah, exactly. I'm sorry, I don't have TikTok, bruh. Yeah. Sorry, I'm not making right? TikTok dances in my mirror. JK, yeah. I'm that person. <laughs> all right, that was me yeah, all absolutely. quarantine. Yeah. Thank you for coming, Tony. Uh, check Static X out. Project Regeneration Volume 2 coming out January. Is it 24th or 26th? 26th. 26th, 2024. Four loco, man. Within five seconds, everything that I had went right out the window. <laughs> Is there any interview question that you hate getting? Is that a curiosity? I should have asked you at the outset, but I was curious. Nothing. No, you're pretty good. You're pretty good with interviews. I watched you with those kids and I was like, this is the most adorable thing I think I've ever seen in my entire life. That little girl. So did she, I'm guessing her dad, because her dad was the one yeah, whispering yeah, the yeah. questions. Mm -hmm. He yeah. just wanted to mm -hmm. have her ask them. Right, yeah. She's like, Stadies. Would she say Stady, Static S or right, something? Yeah, and yeah. I was like, this, yeah. please make more mm -hmm. content. I will watch all of your <laughs> interviews. Like every single one. Yeah, I have my wholesome moments. Yeah. <laughs> Every so often. I'm contractually obligated to have a wholesome moment every once in a while. <laughs> Contracted by who? Yourself? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I didn't realize that you guys were on your own record label. Or like, well, not, you guys are yeah, not I on mean, a record yeah. label. At Seago Entertainment. I'm so yeah. glad we went there. Uh, yeah. I'm so yeah. glad we went there because I think, um, I actually think a, a very popular yeah, common... Yeah, common thread with think with everybody that I've interviewed so far and everybody that I have going forward is not like somebody that's here on a press tour or somebody that's mm. like everybody that I've had is kind of somebody that's paved their own way. Like the last lawyer that I had is um, uh, he's a former baseball, major league baseball agent, but is now a criminal law attorney, he represents a whole bunch of rappers mm. and he gets them out of their unregistered gun posts on Instagram and then like, but he's on parole and, but he started his own firm and he, he's, he's, you know, um, paved a very nice way for himself. But like, I think a big learning lesson for a lot of people is like, you don't have to go the way that everybody's yeah. telling you. And especially with the, like, I'm a big proponent. If, if you are an artist of any kind, like even agents and like, again, that's kind of why I'm doing this shit on my own is because like the last manager I met with was trying to take 40% of like, and I was yeah. like, bro, I don't, I don't, for what? To send me out on a commercial audition? It's like, I'll just make my own work. I don't, I, what am I paying you for? I'm a little, I'm, I'm, I'd be negotiating my own deals right? anyway. <laughs> like, what am I paying you for? Right, just to have your logo. Like, that's you, it? Just to, no, I'm yeah. okay. You yeah. have connections. Okay, mm -hmm. that's fine. I'll make my yeah. own. Right. And I think, um, like I've, and I know even with like podcasts and all of this stuff, like everybody's taken a hold of the market, especially like these agents are clinging on for dear life. These record labels are clinging on. And yet all of these artists, especially music artists, like the big ones right now have all kind of like curated their own following through social media. Mm -hmm. Some may be pretty curated by the record industry, but like for a lot of these bigger ones and younger ones, they figure out how to, that's why I'm like, let me make your social media. You don't have to post on it. Like you can leave it blank for a whole ass year, but like people will follow you and you can get deals off of that. Hmm. Not, and not just like equipment deals, but like poor loco, which I, <laughs> I will be calling Zima. you. 
Uh, Zima. Zima. I want fucking Zima. <laughs> wait, wait, let's look. I just need to see. I just need to see. Hold on, where is Zima? Zima. Zima. I want is Zima. It, oh, wait, Zima. Zima is like a smear yeah. on ice. Wait, what? Zima looks like a smear on oh, ice. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh huh. That, yeah, that's what it used to look like. Yep. I think I can buy Zima. You still sell it? Drizzly. Let's see if I can get it. it says it's in stock online. What? It. Nope. Hold on. I think it's out of stock everywhere. Nope. I that you we. I had, didn't we have this conversation with somebody? We had this conversation with somebody. Somebody's like, Zima, get Zima. And we were like, what? <laughs> and, and then we That's looked the it up. That's the usual response. And we what? can't find it anywhere. Yeah, and so I was like, I don't think they right. make it anymore. Nope, they don't. All right. <laughs> Z, Z, I, it's owned by, it was made and distributed by Coors. Hmm. I can make that happen. I can make that happen. Right, we're going to make Zima happen. It was either Zima or like... Speaking about dreams, I was like, my dream collab, my first ever like product that I would ever have is a is a rock doll uh, for loco. We're gonna make my own version of a for loco. Uh, I'm just mm -hmm. trying to figure out what the flavor would be, but it would be the OG for loco with the with caffeine. The caffeine, in it. The, the, but it would the literally, <laughs> but it would literally the entire can would be one like it would be blacked out and it would just say this is your warning label like <laughs> you one drink per person if mm. anybody dies you're on your own well good luck there there, there it, it should come with with a pen and a little dotted line with an x sign here <laughs> oh my god <laughs> oh my god your signature here <laughs> means you have been duly warned. <laughs> and you will no longer oh hold God, anyone Tony's liable. Gonna, Tony's gonna 100%, you're gonna have to. And wait, leave it to the non-lawyer to figure out the legal way out. You know what? <laughs> I think you'd be a great lawyer, by the way. I think yeah. there's, 